Well, that was a good meal last night at the Wensleydale Heifer. So if anyone wants to go there, you should stay there. It's really good. Anyway, now I'm off to near uh, Newcastle for a talk. If the fire alarm goes off, follow me out to that door. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the toilets are that way. Here's a few quick snippets from the talks and the presentations today. So some of the slides are really interesting. So if you want to pause it and read the detail, you can do. Anyway, I'll just quickly fly through them so you can see. The train was 230 quid. Um, I think we know where that is now. It's got a six in front of it, and that's now 275% higher. Um, oil was $83 a barrel. Uh, now that's in the mid-80s, and that was 30% higher. So quite uh, with Russia and Ukraine in terms of the wheat, and that's why we're seeing it going up considerably but they supply nearly 30 percent of global wheat exports so they are major players in terms of it um this was up from is it too wet too dry in the right areas the wrong areas but that's going to have an impact for corn and soybeans uh, funds are still long so that will support the market in the short term because they're not going to want to see things falling away uh, and crops look really really good locally itself we're going to see some record crops coming through there um, so on the back of that, the funds that I'm talking about as being a positive is actually probably going to be a negative as well, because they'll be looking to sell out on things. If you did not apply optimum amount of nitrogen, you would be able to see in your field, there will be patches. And this is the most vital nutrient element of all. If you are a C, you can see between C and D, there is hardly much difference there. So we laid out all these trials. Most of these trials, were laid out according to our recommendations, is that it's coming out as £1.48 per kilogram of nitrogen. So I'm paying rather than two where we currently are. We Approximately £4,000, £5,000 came from your agricultural activities, came from what you actually probably got up in the morning to actually enjoy doing the growing of the crops. Quick look at the pitch while I'm here. Yeah, that was just It's like cuts it off, doesn't it? It's just like a little robot, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's I didn't think it'd have to stop for each letter, but it does, doesn't it? <laughs> Who's Rico? <laughs> Right now. Like 
So on my way back from Darlington, Newcastle way, just called at Cotton ISO to get the fresh batches of hats, which will be available soon. Um, so it's nice to meet Claire and her, and her husband and see the machine working, which is just like, I don't know, it's fascinating. You could watch it all day. So get back to the yard and see what the lads have got up to. Andrew sent me a video of the fertilizer spreader though, because we found out where that bush had gone. It, the, the rod had seized in the, in the other bushes. So hopefully he's freed that off by the time I get home because it looked a bit of a roaming job underneath. Right, I'm back and here's the first spreader. So while I've been away, Andrew's finished putting it back together, but he found the problem with it, it was seized. So he's got a few videos of fixing it, but I'll show you what happened. So this rod here goes, oscillates. So it twists backwards and forwards and flicks something inside. Anyway, these little metal bushes there, don't know how it's, well, I do know how it's done it. This is stainless steel and that's not. Anyway, that had corroded this piece here, this circle, and gripped that shaft solid. So that was why the plastic bush down here had gone, which is now, let's have a look, in there, because that couldn't move at the top. So when that was spinning, it had nowhere to go, so it damaged this bush. So now, and just have to take these things apart because there's plastic behind it, get it in the vise and get it all free and moving and then put it all back together. There should be two grease nipples on that, I think. Should there? I can't see where the holes would be though, but, but maybe that's why it's done it or it should be oiled at least. It does say grease, so maybe the grease nipples have fell off, but you perhaps should have put them on before we put it back together. But yeah, that, so that had seized up, but I think it's eight, seven or eight years old, so it's not too bad. It's on the tractor now. Um, I'll lower it down and show you what it does on the inside. So what broke was, you can't see that, so let me climb back in and lift the flaps up and you can see better. So there's the shutter there. The fertilizer goes out through that hole there and this spring tine here rocks backwards and forwards on that shaft. Well, that wasn't rocking backwards and forwards and keeping the flap clear. It's the hole clear so it wouldn't flow properly. Anyway, we've sorted all that now. And hopefully it should work properly. The good thing about this spreader is because it constantly recalibrates. It's always been putting the right amount on. So the shutter might have been able to open a lot further than it should have done. And that is why it was still working because it was just opening the shutter even further. But now the agitation is going to be working properly. The shutter probably won't open anywhere near as much, but we never noticed because we've never been putting such a high rate on for a while. And then also the lime doesn't flow like it would if it was a urea or nitrogen or fertilizer. But that's like marbles, it goes everywhere. Anyway, so hopefully it's all sorted now and we can finish spreading lime tomorrow. Sam and Richard have also finished off the brickwork as well where they've been doing the barn up. So I'll go up there tomorrow in daylight and get a look at it. Really good talk this morning. So I, I was talking to them about YouTube and different things and, and where we farm, but other people were also talking first. So we were talking about the grey markets and which way they're going to go and whether the conflict in the Ukraine and Russia is going to going to affect them. So a bit of talk about that. A lot of people saying that they think the market's going to go down. I personally don't think they will, because if you've still got grain to sell and the price is less than it was before harvest, why are you going to sell it? You're going to wait for it to go back up. And if everyone does that, then it'll have to go back up because in order for them to buy it, they'll have to offer more. So I think farmers are in a good position now to be price setters, not price takers, hopefully. don't know whether anyone else agrees with that, but, but let me know in the comments. The other guy was talking from CF Fertilizers. Not really a big fan of CF Fertilizers. No, no, don't want to shoot the messenger. But basically they were saying that you need to still put nearly enough fert on to make sure you're getting the yield but you can maybe cut your rates by around 10% depending on how much you've paid for your fertilizer but 
do you price it at what you can buy fertilizer at now or do you price it at what your average price is of what you've already bought so i thought that was a key question but cf fertilizer now sell your soil sampling kits sorry n sampling kits so you can test how much n is in your plant so you know how much fertilizer to put on now i'm a little bit dubious to this because it just feels like they're trying to sell you something other than fertilizer because they've not got any because they shut the plant but also if they're telling you what you need it's a bit like the agronomist being employed by the chemical manufacturers as well so maybe there should be some sort of independent end test done that was just my take on it anyway so a bit of a random day called in obviously at cotton iso that's what you've just seen them making some hats so i have got some of what i've picked up as well 25 i think led hats are on ebay tonight there's a link below here and then the others as i unpackage them and sort them through i'll put more on because we still have not sorted out an online shop yet it's just one of them jobs that just seems to be taking forever because there's always something else to do with the day job so thanks to everyone that's been watching today i hope you found it interesting even though it was a bit of a mixed match of me not really being on the farm but i'll see you all tomorrow anyway and it's normal service will be resumed